employee assistant program is a viable resource used all over the world to ensure the well-being of employee as the name implies it is used in america in europe more in south africa when you consider the continent of africa to promote wellness productivity performance and profit for organization so even the name and the value statement already tell you the importance employee wellness productivity workplace performance profit for the organization profitability will ensure sustainability so the business or the enterprise remain an ongoing concern so that is the uh, the function of EAP employee assistant program unfortunately it is still very much uh, at its infancy in Nigeria and uh, is not that well embraced at the moment For second edition of the summit, uh, we are EAP practitioners. We're licensed, um, privileged to practice EAP across Africa. A couple of years ago, I got an award in South Africa as uh, uh, one of the opinion leaders in EAP for Africa. And I have seen the value of EAP in South Africa because I attend the conference in South Africa annually and America every other year. Uh, I've seen the value and I know that it is a very needed resource in our environment at the moment. Anything that is promoting wellness, employee well-being and productivity is needed in our environment. It is on record that Nigeria is one of the least productive uh, nation in terms of employee performance globally. So. It is high time the Ministry of Labor, the Ministry of Health, and relevant government agencies begin to look at such initiatives as this so that they can promote it. We came into it out of a sense of patriotism and out of the sense of paternalism. Uh, we know the value it will generate. We provide EAP services across board, especially for the oil majors and the multinationals in Nigeria. We strongly believe that it should be embraced in the public sector as well. Uh, that's why we do this. It's one of the initiatives we do. We do a free monthly webinar called Connect and Learn. We've done that for since the COVID. We do a monthly write-up, uh, a wellness and productivity well, uh, write-up called the Op Optima. So we started those a few years ago. The Connect and Learn is a monthly learning event. It's free online learning event talking about the different aspects of EAP, of wellness, burnout, resilience, sleep disorder, food disorder, what have you, every aspect of wellness. And then we went on to start writing the Optima, which is the monthly newsletter. And so it's taking it further, promoting EAP, advocating EAP, creating a level of public awareness, creating a level of enlightenment, hoping that government agencies and relevant uh, professional bodies will buy into it so it becomes a national resource that we will use for the betterment, for the well-being of the average Nigerian. Well, last year's uh, summit, the, the theme for last year's summit was workplace wellness, productivity, and performance. This year's summit is employee wellness from wages to welfare. You will ad agree with me that it's very apt, it is timely, it is topical. It is an issue that is staring on all of us in the face. Uh, at this year's summit, we've brought together uh, a host 
of practitioners, HR practitioners, uh, people from the academia, uh, clinical psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, and we're going to be looking at what is the current level of the well-being of the average Nigerian, looking at the socioeconomic crisis, looking at the cost of living, looking at that is our starting point. Then we will ask ourselves that pertinent question, is it all about wages? All that has been in the news lately is about minimum wage, livable wage, take home pay. There is more to life than just wages. What we know is that even the talk of wages has heightened the rate of inflation. The current rate of inflation, according to the Bureau of Statistics, is about 35.5% of thereabout. And the, the food inflation rate is about 408 or thereabout. So the talk about wages of 750 of uh, what have you, 70,000, 35,000 has contributed to drive up inflation. Can we begin to look at a more constructive, more creative way of rewarding employee of compensation systems that will be beneficial to the people. By the time you pay them 70,000 and there is a commensurable increase in rent, in transportation, in school fees, in health bill, it leaves the employees with nothing. The whole idea is that we must go back to the drawing table, to the 70s where we have national development plans. And in our national development plan, we begin to factor social factors into our planning. It is not just economic plan. It is socio-economic. What are the social indices that we should look at? After all, when we talk of development plan, who is meant to benefit from it? Is it not the human? So let us bring the human factor in. Let us bring the social factors in. Let us bring critical lifestyle issues in and these are the focus of this how do you begin to look at creative compensation reward system that will include the well-being of the average employee how do you look at compensating them so such that they can afford health care over 80 percent of nigerians still pay out of pocket for health services. Can we begin to look as it, 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 it has been done in civilized countries? Can we begin to look at evolving a national health system? Can we begin to look at evolving a social security system? Can we begin to look at evolving an agricultural system to ensure food security, not just for the nation, but for the average human being? Can we begin to look at such educational systems that are functional, we produce people we need. We're not just producing medical doctors who are jackpying, but people who will serve the interest of the nation and we begin to evolve from being just a third world country to a developing country and then we are e evolving for national development. Those are the kind of thoughts that went into this. The ultimate aim, can Nigeria be a welfare state? Nigeria can be, we have the resources. What is lacking is the political willpower. It is easy, yet not so easy. Uh, it's a service we provide uh, for a number of organizations. Uh, number one, some one of the things that some employers will ensure is an annual medical for their staff, health insurance for their staff, 
canteen where uh, food is regulated taking the health need of the individual is provided at least some organization will ensure one decent meal a day there is also what we call workplace counseling where personal challenges personal issues you have an eap practitioner either on ground or can be reached 24 hours digitally or on phone to help resolve some of the personal employee wellness issues be they physical be they mental be they financial be they family we also have like i have said uh, for some organization we have monthly employee engagement where we deal with different issues they come up with prevalent issues in their organizations we bring in experts who talk about that issues to allay their affairs and give some relief. Issues like burnout, work-life balancing, parenting. So there is a whole gamut or a, a, a rich menu of programs, policies, and activities. For some organizations, we've done harassment policy for them, workplace harassment policy. Some we've done uh, substance abuse policy. So there, there's a lot that can be done. And the more of this you do, the more confidence the employee feels about that organization. The organization becomes a socially responsive and responsive co corporate citizen. And you find that labor turnover in such organization is lower compared to the national average. There is a sense of belonging. There is a sense of wellness and the level of productivity is higher. It has been shown empirically that organization with EAP program, employer stand program, spend less on employee health because the preventive measures are already in place. Safety measures are already in place. Security measures are already in place. So what will have gone into health? They reinvest on the employee uh, well, uh, wellness, uh, providing other services, and even corporate social responsibility to their operating societies. These are the advantages, and, and these are the reasons why the people at the hems of affair, at the national level, at the state level, at the local government level, should look into this. We can send a party to South Africa to see what is working there and then we can embrace uh, the policies and programs of EAB, EAP and adapt to our own needs here. We don't have to borrow everything wholeheartedly. We can acculturize it and make it functional in our own environment. Things can only get better. We have a professional association in Nigeria called IPAN Nigeria. Uh, at the moment, the association was not as active or functional as it should be for a few years. At the moment, we're having a transformation agenda. And what does that entail? One is changing the board of trustees. We are bringing in people who are knowledgeable, people who are well exposed, people who are enlightened, people who have shown interest and passion in EAP to provide leadership. After they have come in place, there is going to be a, a, an election for a new executive to come in. We are doing membership drive. There will be a lot of advocacy, a lot of public enlightenment program to begin to put EAP in the face of the policy makers, the politicians in Nigeria, so that they can embrace it. Uh, it can only get better. There is also the EAP Africa that is also being evolving to begin to look at the issue of awareness, certification, professionalism, who can practice, who cannot practice, what does it take to practice, 
licensing of professionals and things. It is evolving. And that's why I said it can only get better. And we hope that soon, now than later, EAP will become a household name in Nigeria.